Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Ben Danun, and you are watching Israeli News Live. The bias doesn't seem to stop in American media. In fact, there's one particular news channel, Newsmax, who actually has been bringing this to the forefront. Uh, it's been exposed today, and championed by this is none other than Steve Malzberg from the Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax. He has been really upfront defending Israel against all the uh, biased media from every angle, and out front on the biased side of the media is CNN headline news. Take a look at what Steve had to say. Because the conversation started with a soundbite, a video of John Kerry, not only talking about a ceasefire, but then saying after the ceasefire, we need to address the concerns of the Palestinians, meaning Hamas, because they're the people involved in this uh, battle. And those concerns are opening the borders to let the supplies in. Now, the blockade is in place from Egypt and Israel because the terrorist government there are terrorists and they import rockets and tunnels. Egypt has closed the tunnels going in from Gaza to Egypt. By the way, Egypt doesn't want, uh, doesn't open their border to let the Palestinian people into their country either. Uh, so there must be something to the fact that Hamas runs a terrorist state on Gaza. They inherited a peaceful piece of land with uh, the philanthropy of Jewish philanthropists from the U.S. who put hundreds of millions of dollars in greenhouses and infrastructure. And you know what the Palestinians did? The day they got Gaza, they destroyed it all. And now they have a terrorist state. That's what Hamas is. Are there good people there? Yeah. But you know what? It's not the good people that are killing Israeli civilians and letting them live in fear day after day after day. We should have An awesome job Steve has done there in defending uh, Israel. And not only Steve himself, the, the whole program of Newsmax has really been taking a hit at the biased side of reporting instead of reporting truth about what is going on. And also in another uh, hit uh, was from the Newsmax main uh, interview there. They were looking at the debate between uh, CNN's uh, um, Aaron Burnett and the uh, Israeli ambassador uh, Ron Dermer in the exchange that they had. They played that earlier on their program today. Take a li listen there as the Israeli ambassador uh, uh, Ron Dermer stands up for Israel against the constant bias attack uh, that the media is playing against Israel. And a, and a fine job he did. And as well as Newsmax and the incredible reporting they're doing, exposing such bias reporting that is coming out of Israel, no doubt politically motivated uh, by the Turner Broadcasting System. Pointed out in their evening newscast. Actually. Do you not think that it's relevant to report on CNN? The Secretary General of the United Nations yesterday warned against the use of UN schools and shelter for mm -hmm. rocket missile depots of Hamas? And Ambassador, it, it is relevant. And let me ask you this well, then, because listening. of what you said. But, but, Aaron, I've been listening for two hours of reports on CNN. I have seen split screens, horrible pictures horrible pictures that any decent human being would be horrified by. I have not heard a single person say what I just said to you now. And I think that that does a disservice to your viewers. Rich, we thank you for Skyping in today. And let's just begin with the obvious question. Are we seeing a media bias in the United States against Israel? Well, I think so. I think the longer this conflict goes on, the more it's going to be defined by these pictures of, of civilian destruction, Palestinian suffering, and it's making Israel look like a big bad bully, and you lose more and more of the context about how, you know, rockets been fired in Israel's directions. They were intended to kill as many <laughs> Moving on in other news, Amy Sheetreets out of Haifa, Israel, sent a video to us today, a uh, very disturbing video, I might add. It was uh, from Memory TV. It's an Arabic television station there, and it was the former advisor to the Iranian defense minister who is speaking publicly on the television there about what they are doing right now, the calls for arming uh, uh, in other strategic locations, especially in the West Bank. They said they will be resupplying the missiles to, uh, to the Gaza Strip, to Hamas, uh, but they're really looking to, to bring in short-range missiles. They said they do not need long-range missiles in order to be able to attack 
Uh, cities such as Tel Aviv and Haifa it could easily be done anywhere from the West Bank with short-range missiles. And the, the ante is being stepped up to be able to attack Israel from all sides. Uh, take a look at this news broadcast here, and you'll see the subtitles there as the former um, advisor to the Iranian defense minister speaks about this. قنوات مهمة جدا عبر الأردن وعبر الجولان وكذلك مناطق أخرى إذا سيرى الجميع هناك جبهات تفتح مفاجأة وبصورة كبيرة لدعم القضية الفلسطينية في الضفة الغربية وفي غزة فلذا أنا أعتقد هناك غربلة كبيرة ستحصل في المنطقة حسب المعلومات وحسب الدلائل والمؤشرات وما قاله الإمام الخامنئي هو يعرف ماذا قال أن الجبهة, الجبهة الجديدة لا بد أن تفتح تفتح من قبل الضفة الغربية بعد تسليحها وخاصة بالصواريخ لأننا نعرف جيدا يعني المسافات بين الضفة الغربية وتل أبيب وحيفا ومناطق أخرى أقرب بكثير من غزة إذا تحتاج إلى إمكانيات بسيطة صواريخ ليست بعيدة المدى قريب المدى ممكن أن تغير الصورة كليا في الأراضي المحتلة يعني كلام السيد علي خامنا أفهم منك سيد أمير أنه ليس رد فعل على الكلام الذي قال بتجريد غزة من السلاح إنما هو دعوة ومنطلق استراتيجي نعم يعني سيزيد تسليح غزة وسيدخل السلاح الاستراتيجي إلى الضفة الغربية ونتمنى من الإخوة في السلطة الفلسطينية أن يساعدوا في ذلك وأن لا with so much bad uh, news around Israel on every side there, a beautiful report was sent to me by email today. And I don't have the email in front of me to be able to read to you, but I have the gist of the story that I wanted to share with you. And I'm probably more important that I share the gist than the actual details. But there was a, an Israeli soldier who was fighting in the IDF, a young man who was not sure if God really existed or not. And he was uh, part of the brigade that does the Iron Dome. And he was speaking about how that the Iron Dome detects the missiles coming in and then will fire, calculates distance, wind speed, etc., and then goes up and then knocks the missiles that are coming in out of the air. At this particular moment, though, as a missile was coming in, it was going to hit near a train, uh, train area there where there were a lot of people. One missile goes up and misses. A second one, and I believe even a third missile, goes up and misses its target. At that point, they were radioing and letting uh, the emergency uh, people know in Israel that there was about to be a large loss of life. When suddenly, he said, a tremendous gust of wind comes in and they literally are able to see the incoming missile. And as the wind struck the missile, he literally watched it turn and go into the sea. As he saw this, he jumped up and began to scream, there is a God. There is a God. And immediately he wrote to his instructor, I believe back in America, and asked, please help me find a yeshiva to go to. I know now there is a God watching over Israel. Truly, the God of Israel, Hashem himself, as we know to be Yeshua, is watching Israel. I'm Stephen Ben Danun with Israeli News Live. Shalom.